the Romans are gone, but they left behind certain cultural achievements that other cultures will grab, that other cultures will build upon. Today we're going to highlight some of the lasting achievements in engineering. As always, you should have your notebook open to the correct page. At the top, you should have the title of the notes. You should also draw a line about two and a half inches from the left-hand side straight down. This will divide your notebook paper into two sections. Area A will be where the area you put the keywords in. Area C is where you'll take most of your notes, draw your little diagrams, bullet notes. And finally, area B is where you'll do your reflections, summaries, or questions that you have for me. The topics covered in today's lessons will include domes and arches, aqueducts, and roads. These are your key words. Before we get started, we need to discuss the Pax Romana, also known as the Roman Peace. Imagine your teacher placed a disobedient student in a corner. That student can still cause problems, but he's under the thumb of the teacher at the moment. Likewise, the Romans used their army to keep the enemies at bay, to force peace within the empire. This peace allowed the Romans to build and trade and share their knowledge with everyone around the Mediterranean. Example of Roman influence. Here's the capital of California in Sacramento, and we're looking at concrete columns and domes. The Romans learned to use uh, arches and domes from other cultures. And in the process, they used it all over their empire, spreading it from one end to the other. This bridge-like structure is called an arcade. Series of arches on top of arches on top of arches. In fact, this is actually um, a large aqueduct spanning a ravine. An arch is composed of separate wedge-shaped blocks that are cut and fit into a curve. The blocks are held in place by a big wooden frame until they are locked together at the top with a keystone. The weight of the arch at the top presses down and pushes the sides outward. But when you support these sides, the outward forces are counteracted. Now the wooden frame can be moved because the entire structure is stable. The Romans didn't invent the arch, but when they realized its potential, they used it again and again to expand interior and exterior spaces and literally carry water hundreds of miles if that is what was needed. The secret to the arch's success is the keystone. It helps distribute the weight equally from side to side. All you have to do is reinforce the side where the pressure comes out and you can build arches on top of arches on top of arches. In fact, this is exactly how they built the Colosseum. Arch pressing against arch, distributing the weight equally. Now let's talk about aqueducts. If you're building a city, you need water. And as the city of Rome grew and as many Roman cities grew, they needed a reliable water source. As the local rivers became more and more polluted and population grew, they realized that they needed to bring in fresh water. So aqueducts were built using the latest methods in concrete and arches. And they brought water from up to 100 miles away through mountains and valleys. As you can see, as a lasting contribution, the Romans have had quite an impact on us. You can take a look at these two pictures. Our aqueduct system is very similar to that of which the Romans had built over 2,000 years ago. Roman architecture is still with us today. On the left-hand side, you can see another arcade. The water, of course, would run along the top in an enclosed chamber or tube. And over to the right-hand side, you'll see a tunnel. Well, not quite a tunnel, but you'd see a covered trench. About 80% of the Romans built their aqueducts underground. This was, of course, to protect it from invaders who would like to cut off their water or poison their water supply.
Roman architecture was made up of five parts. Most of it, of course, covered trenches, tunnels going through mountains. Oftentimes, they'd have access shafts so they could send slaves down. In pressurized pipes, these were usually made out of lead, which brought other problems to the Roman society. And, of course, bringing the water right to the town at the lowest levels would probably be an elevated wall, a bunch of stone bricks laid on top of each other. But if it had to be higher than, say, five feet, you'd have to build an arcade. These, of course, were used to span valleys and ravines. Here we have our Roman town. It needs to grow, so it's going to need some water. But before building the town, they would have locked in some reservoir some 60, 70 miles away. Here we have a reservoir. They'll bring the water to cover trenches using gravity the whole way. These covered trenches, of course, will be dug and then buried. When they come to a ravine, if it's long, they might line it with lead pipes. This will allow water to go through and force it back up. Through mountains, we're going to have to dig straight through it using uh, access shafts. We'll send our slaves through. Now, when we're starting to get to flat land, getting closer to the towns, we'll start using our arcades to slowly bring it down, eventually along to the walls, and then eventually to a cistern. This is where the water will then be, again, using gravity, sent out to the rest of the town. Rich people would get theirs brought directly to their house. Bathhouses would be supplied. And, of course, the public would get their water using public fountains. These ran all the time. This is a great picture. All roads lead to Rome. In fact, when the Roman Empire started to consolidate its power, it started building roads to connect city to city to city. In fact, you could be anywhere in the empire and just about find a road that would take you all the way to Rome thus connecting every part of the empire with its capital. The importance of roads is that it brought everyone together. So everyone could trade, everyone could use the same language, everyone could follow the same laws, and the army could travel throughout the roads to protect the Roman Empire. Hundreds of thousands of roads were done, mile after mile after mile. And these roads are still around today. In fact, it was these same roads that merchants will use throughout the Middle Ages and into the Renaissance. And it's, in fact, it's these same roads that the Black Plague will spread. Roads were built to last. With this cutaway, you can see that the Roman armies dug trenches, probably a few feet down, lined them with rubble, and then larger rocks, and then eventually paving stones. Roads were usually angled to create drainage, and even some roads had speed bumps to slow traffic in the middle of the cities. This will conclude our discussion of Roman engineering. I hope you enjoyed learning about arches, aqueducts, and roads. Here we are at the bottom of our notes. This is the summary section. This is where you need to go back and read through your notes and create some sort of connection. So the response is going to ask you to either summarize or draw some graphics or even come up with some questions that might show up on a test or questions you might want to ask me. You want to do this at the bottom of every note page.